Isn't that a great clip? Isn't that a great clip? It's Friday, but Sunday's coming. And guess what? Sunday came, Jesus arose, and He is alive. He is alive today. He is alive right now. He is alive indeed. Indeed. So, as I said earlier, why is this fact that Jesus is alive right now, and why is the fact that Jesus rose from the dead on that third day, why is it so important to you and I right now as Christ followers or maybe as a pre-Christ follower? Hopefully some of you are watching are not Christ followers right now. Listen, Christianity stands or falls on the historical bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ. And if Jesus did not rise from the dead, then there is no resurrection and there is no Christianity. None. The resurrection is the single most important and the greatest event in the history of the world. And the resurrection itself is the crowning achievement, the crowning moment of that work of atonement and and buying us uh, and paying for our sin that Jesus provided. He did that on the cross, but His resurrection sealed that. And the, the most important text, I think, in the Bible, the definitive text about the resurrection and the importance of the resurrection is found in 1 Corinthians 15. I want to give you a second to turn to your Bible, turn them on or scroll down to it or open them up. And we're going to be camping out in 1 Corinthians 15 here today. And so I want you to think about this. <coughs> that these few verses that we're going to read today out of 1 Corinthians, Paul just nails it and he lets us know exactly why the resurrection is so important and what a difference it makes in mine and your life today. So, first thing I want you to understand is this. The resurrection is essential to the gospel. Remember the gospel? The word gospel means good news. And uh, the, uh, the, the soldiers that were sent from a battle site back to the, to the king to, to share the good news that the battle had been won, those were called evangelists. It had nothing to do with religion. They were called evangelists. And what they were doing is they were taking the gospel or the good news that the battle has been won back to the king. So the, Paul talks about the gospel here. And I want us to look at this. We're going to read the first four verses here. So uh, I'm reading from the Christian Standard, and they'll be up on the screen if you don't have yours at home. Now, I want to make clear for you, brothers and sisters, the gospel... I preach to you which you received on which you have taken your stand and by which you are being saved if you hold to the message I preach to you unless you believed in vain. For I passed on to you the most important what I also received. Now listen what Paul says is the most important here. The most important what I also received that Christ died for our sins according to the Scripture. And that he was buried and that he was raised again on the third day according to the Scriptures. Guys, the the resurrection is absolutely essential to the gospel. The gospel is this, and Paul is clear. The gospel is Jesus died for our sins, he was buried, and he was raised again. All this according to the Scriptures. And... These are the essential truths of the gospel. If you just shut the gospel down to the cop, this is it, folks. This is the bottom line of the gospel. Through the sacrificial, substitutionary death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, everybody who puts their faith in Him are forgiven of their sins, reconciled to God, in other words, made friends with God again, adopted as His children, and receive eternal life. So the resurrection itself is essential to the gospel. It's just just so clear, Paul says. it's, It's a part of the gospel. It is the gospel. It is essential to the gospel. Listen, you can't have the other two parts of the gospel and leave out the resurrection. There are some that try to do that. There are some that say, yeah, he died and and he was buried and that was it. No. 
It's not the gospel if it's not all three. It's like a three-legged stool. You jerk out one of the legs, what's going to happen to the, to the stool? Don't fall over. The gospel falls over if you take out any of the three legs. So, not only is the, is the resurrection essential to the gospel, the resurrection is essential to our faith. It's essential to our faith. I want to read you this great quote. Um, John Whale said this. Listen. The Gospels do not explain the resurrection. The resurrection explains the Gospel. Belief in the resurrection is not an appendage to the Christian faith. It is the Christian faith. So it's important. It's essential to our faith. Guys, without the Gospel, without the resurrection, we have no faith. We have no, nothing to put our faith in. Let's, let's jump down. Paul continues here, down in verse 12. Let me read 12 through 19 for you, and you can follow along. And, and he's explained this. He said, it, guys, it's critical. It's crucial. It's essential to our faith. Listen to what he says in verse 12 and following. Now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection from the dead? Uh, in the church there at Corinth, people were saying, you know, no, res nobody can be raised from the dead. It can't happen. Okay? But Paul says, if that, if, if Christ is proclaimed raised from the dead, how can you say there's no resurrection from the dead? And then he goes on to give us these if-then statements. So listen to these very carefully. If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Jesus Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation is in vain, and so is your faith. Moreover, we are found to be false witnesses about God because we have testified wrongly about God that He raised up Christ, whom He did not raise up, if in fact the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is worthless. You are still in your sins. Those then who have fallen asleep in Christ have also perished. If we put our hope in Christ for this life only, we should be pitied more than anyone. Whew. Well, he laid it out. He laid it out. Paul says, look, there's only two options. Either Jesus was resurrected from the dead or he wasn't. There's no gray area there. Okay? And if Christ was not resurrected, then nobody else would be either. And that means that all of Christianity is a lie, and all of what we preach about is a lie, and all of what you believe in is a lie, and we might as well just quit. <laughs> Paul says, you are still in sin. Sin would still be in control of your life, reigning your life, and, and we would have no hope. And any attempt by any of us, if there had been no resurrection... Any attempt for us to live a victorious life here on earth would just be wasted. Okay? Because Jesus rose from the dead, just like he promised, we know that God and his promises are true. And the resurrection affirms that Jesus' words and his life were true. I promise y'all I don't have corona. <coughs> something in the throat. So, because of that, we know that Jesus, his words and his life are true. <coughs> I'm so sorry. And because he rose, guys, we can have certainty. You can have certainty that your sins are forgiven. Because he said it, it's done. Because he rose, he lives and he represents us before God the Father. He rose and he defeated death. And we know that we will be raised also. Jesus' resurrection guaranteed both his promise and his authority to make the promise. But you have to have faith in what he says. That's what, that's, you have to believe what he says. That's what's called faith. God's power brought Jesus back to life uh, from the dead, and that same power is available to you and I today. The very same power that raised Jesus from the dead is in you today as a Christ follower. 
So it is essential to our faith. If we don't believe the resurrection, we don't have a faith. We don't have, we don't have nothing. We don't have anything. We have no hope. We have no hope for this life. We have no hope for the next life. We have nothing. And the third thing I want us to look at here is that the resurrection is not only essential to the gospel, the resurrection is essential to our faith, but the resurrection is also essential to our future. To our future. Jesus' resurrection guarantees our resurrection. Jesus himself said it. Um, He's the foundation, the cornerstone of all of our hope. And look at this verse. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Jesus is very clear. If we believe in him, even though we die, we will rise again. That's the resurrection. Did you realize that one day... Like we're celebrating Resurrection Sunday today. One day there's going to be Resurrection Day when all of us rise. Look at what Paul says in 1 Corinthians about it. Uh, Drop down to verse 20. Paul says, But as it is, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits, in other words, he's the first uh, crop of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man... The resurrection of the dead also comes through a man. For just as in Adam all die. Hey, here's, here's a newsflash. Everybody going to die. Everybody. Okay. For just as in Adam all die, so also in Christ all will be made alive again. All will be made alive again. Here's what Paul means there. Adam's sin brought about our condemnation and our death. But Jesus' sinlessness, his sacrifice, brought about our resurrection from the dead for everybody that is related to God through Christ by accepting that sacrifice on their behalf. Everybody who believes in Christ will be given a new life. Now, a lot of us talk about eternal life. And we think, well, my eternal life starts when I die. Wrong. Your eternal life starts the moment you become a Christ follower. The moment you become a Christ follower, you you are secured in Christ and in that eternal life. And and we have what what I love what uh, Tony Evans calls it, the victorious resurrection. That's what we have. Okay, Because the resurrection, because of the resurrection, this, this is getting it right to the point here, guys. Because of the resurrection, as believers in Jesus Christ, you and I get to experience a double resurrection. What? Two for the price of one. <laughs> okay, a double resurrection. First of all, we are resurrected from our spiritual death. It says we were dead in our trespasses and sin. And uh, we are resurrected out of that spiritual death. And we become spiritually alive. Okay? And I love the way the Bible says this. Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it abundantly, fully, hilariously, overflowing. Jesus didn't come and live and be crucified and died and raised from the dead so that you could sit around and have a pity party all your life. Get up and get out of it. And I'm just even going to say this. I believe if you're sitting around your pity party all the time, you're saying Jesus' death and resurrection wasn't good enough for you. I'm just saying. We, We have been raised to new life so that we can experience the beauty and the magnificence and the the glory of the gospel in our lives today, right now. We don't have to wait until we get to some place later. We experience it right now. That's the first resurrection. And then the second resurrection is that 
Uh, it's that final moment when we'll be resurrected out of this old horrible, broken, miserable, groaning world that we live in, and we will be resurrected into a world of righteousness, harmony, peace, and love. And Scripture says there ain't going to be no more crying, no more suffering, no more shame, no more death, no more sin, and we will live with Jesus forever and ever and ever. That's the second resurrection. They asked Paul, said, what's that, how's that going to work? So Paul goes on to explain a little bit to him, but I want to skip through that because he gives us a great illustration. I want to know what it's going to look like. I want to know what that second res resurrection is going to look like, literally, and Paul gives us that over in the, down in verse 55. We're going to read 55 through uh, 59. And I'm just going to say it. I'll read it all at one time. We'll come back and talk about it. What I'm saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor, the corruption, nor can corruption inherit corruption. Now, here's verse 51. Listen, I'm telling you a mystery. We will not all fall asleep, but we will all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we will be changed. <coughs> For this corruptible body must be clothed with incorruptibility, and this mortal body must be clothed with immortality. When this corruptible body is clothed with incorruptibility, and the mortal body is clothed with immortality, then the saying that is written will take place. Listen to what it says. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where death is your sting? Where death is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We will be changed in the twinkling of an eye. <coughs> this old body is just going to rot. It's, it's, it's uh, corruptible. It's mortal. So Paul's saying, so what's got to happen is we've got to be given a body that is incorruptible and immortal. And that's what's going to happen. And it's never going to go away again. <coughs> never. Never. Guys, I hope you see that resurrection is so much more than just Jesus coming out of the grave. The resurrection is Jesus opening up our resurrection for us. Opening the, the future for us. Resurrecting us currently out of our sin and our death. Our spiritual sin, our spiritual death. But also resurrecting us eternally on that second resurrection. I'm going to call the praise team on up right now. <clears throat> and as I do, I've got a couple of quotes here from Billy Graham about the resurrection. And these are just so powerful. <clears throat> so powerful. Billy Graham says this, without the resurrection, <clears throat> the cross is meaningless. What? Without the resurrection, the cross is meaningless. Then he goes on to say, The resurrection of Christ changed the midnight of bereavement into the sunrise of reunion. Then he goes on to say, The resurrection of Christ changed the midnight of disappointment into the sunrise of joy. And then finally he says, The resurrection of Christ changed the midnight of fear into the sunrise of peace. Just like in that video we saw. Satan seemed to be victorious that day on the cross, around the cross. Satan thought he had won. Satan was already having his victory parade. And his trophy that he was holding was death. 
God turned Satan's apparent victory into total defeat when Jesus rose from the dead. Do you, can you imagine what Satan looked like when he saw Jesus out of that tomb? Here he thought he'd won the battle and he was good to go. And when he realized that Jesus could not stay dead, he realized there was no hope for him and his people. So death, since Jesus beat death, there's no longer, we don't have to be worried about fear or dread. And death once was proof of Satan's power. Now it's proof of his puniness. If that's a word. overcome death. That's why there's a hope for Christ's followers when they pass on. We say we're going to see them again. Guys, that is not trivial, fake platitudes. That is real. And that is the hope we have. Jesus overcame death and we will overcome death. sinners because Jesus has made us saints. You're not just a sinner saved by grace. You're a saint. So start living like it. Jesus died to make you a saint. Death has been defeated and we can have hope beyond the grave. Guys, this good news we talked about, the good news of the resurrection, the good news of the gospel starts with some some indisputable facts. And here they are. First of all, we've all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. God wants bullseye living from us and we can't even hit the doggone target. We've all sinned. Jesus died for our sins. Jesus was raised to new life. Jesus showed that he was alive by showing himself to well over 500 people in those 40 days before he went back to heaven. In the Old Testament scriptures, the prophets all point toward this. Jesus fulfilled all those prophecies. So the good news, the gospel starts with those indisputable facts, but the gospel requires, listen, a personal response. so many other people around us our Savior. Come on. <laughs> your wife is not your Savior. Your pastor is not your Savior. Your children are not your Savior. Your job is not your Savior. Your government is not your Savior. Jesus Christ, God Almighty, is your Savior. Stop putting other people in His place. They didn't go to the cross for you. And praise God, He didn't stay there. He rose.
celebration of resurrection, a celebration of Jesus' resurrection, and a celebration of your resurrection. Jesus wants to raise you up from the dead right now and give you new life, life to the fullest. If you want to do that, I'm going to lead you in a prayer. And it's not the, it's not the, the you know, the, it's your, your understanding of this. And what it is, is if you say this from your heart, you're not just repeating my words. You're saying these to God from your heart and, and truthfully, then you will be saved. So you might pray something like this. Lord, I admit that I'm a sinner. God, I admit that I can't make it on my own. God, I admit that I have messed up. God, I believe that Jesus died for my sin to forgive me of my sin and to give me his righteousness. And I believe that Jesus rose again to defeat death and give me real life. Now, God, I just confess my need of you. I need you, God. I need you. I turn my life over to you. If you're who you say you are and if Jesus did what he said he did, then I'm all in. I trust you, Jesus. I turn from my sin right now and I turn toward you by faith in Jesus. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for resurrecting me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, you are now a Christ follower. If you meant that, please give us a holler. Share us a line on Facebook, a live there. Let us know you did. We've got some stuff we want to get to you. God bless you. Thank you for that. Jesus rose from the dead so that you too would raise from the dead and have eternal life and that you would have abundant life right now, today, this moment. Right. God bless you. We're going to just sing and we're going to close this service out with singing. Happy Resurrection.